In a video by Adam Savage and his YouTube channel Tested, he got together with Matt Parker to create five intersecting tetrahedra. I have always wanted to make a shape called, it's the five intersecting tetrahedra. There's a unique challenge with creating the five intersecting tetrahedra as explained by Matt Parker. The one time I tried to build this previously was at a festival with yeah. very long sticks. Even once we got it together, it all just kind of slumped. <laughs> yeah, like, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a, kind of a UFO looking thing. The challenge with creating the five intersecting tetrahedra is that you need to have the right length and width in order to have the shapes interlock with each other. If they're too long and they're too thin, then the shape overall just slumps down. And so they address this issue by creating a simple paper model. And what's very clever about this is it solves one of the major issues with building the five intersecting tetrahedra, which is they don't naturally hold themselves in the neat arrangement. As you can see with the paper model, the lengths and widths of the tetrahedra are just right for the shapes to interlock with each other. And now the vertices are placed in a special way that resembles the dodecahedron. To be clear, when we say this has symmetry with a dodecahedron, what we mean is that each of the vertices of each of these five triangles is yeah. also the vertice of a dodecahedron that encapsulates. And so Matt and Adam set off to create their own version using precise measurements taken from the paper model. 2.5. Yeah. Oh, well, this is going to be great. It's going to be um, 10 to 1. Is that, oh my god, 0.25 to... Yeah. How lovely. What they mean about a ratio of 10 to 1, if the width is one unit, the length has to be 10 in order for the model to work out. And here's an early version that I created, and as you can see, the vertices form irregular pentagons, and I'm looking for irregular pentagons. So, as Matt Parker says, That has not scratched my itch. The version Matt and Adam created looks much better. As you can see, they used plastic tubing and elastic string in order to weave together the tetrahedra. And this enables us to see the pentagons formed by the vertices. And overall, it creates the outline of a dodecahedron. <laughs> For my ultra simple yeah, solution, yeah. I'm just... Cords, we'll sew them together. That was still like six full hours. You've added a lot of complexity. <laughs> you turned it into a puzzle. You tend to build into a puzzle. Um, I Pleasing, though. I really is pleasing, and it's really fun to build, and I kind of want to think up other ways to either maybe 3D print pieces so that you could almost screw this together. Oh, like the hubs. Like, mm -hmm. each vertex is a... What a great idea. The method Matt and Adam used is they first created the five intersecting tetrahedra, which enabled them to create the dodecahedron. What if I reverse that? First, I'm going to create the dodecahedron and use its vertices to help me create the five intersecting tetrahedra. So in order to create this, I 3D printed 20 vertices. The dodecahedron consists of 30 edges and the intersecting tetrahedra also consists of 30 edges, but they're just a little bit longer. The next thing Matt explains is that there are actually two different versions and they're just mirror images of each other. Yes. Now, here's something yeah. <laughs> that is an opportunity, not a crisis. Mm -hmm. um, this has the handedness, chirality. Yeah. We're building two. Oh, we can we do both do chiralities. Yes. yes. Let's yes. totally do yeah. that. Uh, are you so, a lefty or a righty? I'm right. I am also right. Uh, so. <laughs> but one, one's going to match this exactly. Yeah. And, and one's yeah. going to be the mirror image, I which love is it. either we get a wee mirror and put it next to this. And then one of us looks at the real thing and one looks at the reflection. Um, or you've, one of us has to mentally flip it as we're... You have to mentally flip it. Deal, deal, <laughs> I feel fine, like you have fine. the more plastic okay, brain fine, fine, for fine, this fine, kind fine. of operation. You're on. <laughs> so the model I created has right chirality because the vertices lean to the right whenever they connect with each other. So I went ahead and played with different iterations if you take a look at the vertice, the holes are already cut at a specific angle, so all I have to do is just put the sticks into place and the shape begins to form. So in this version, I just used five vertices to create a pentagon at the bottom, such as a base, and then the tetrahedrons are just then created, which looks like they're floating in the sky, and it looks really nice. I specialize in making geometric lattice structures. With a 3D printer, I'm able to create any type of vertice and connect them with the struts. 
One of the first geometric lattices that I made are the platonic solids. And these are the tetrahedron, octahedron, hexahedron, icosahedron, and the dodecahedron. This is why I was able to tackle the challenge of creating the five intersecting tetrahedra. One of the interesting things about the platonic solids is that if I keep all the edges the same length, then we get to see the overall sizes are different. The dodecahedron becomes the largest, which has 30 struts and 20 vertices, and the tetrahedron is the smallest, with only 6 struts and 4 vertices. One of the biggest lattice models that I've created was the great Rombe Kosai dodecahedron. It has 180 struts, 120 vertices, and it has 12 decagon faces, 20 hexagon faces, and 30 square faces. So I sell these wonderful shapes on my online shop. This video inspired me to create my own version of the intersecting tetrahedra. I used a CAD software to design the hubs, and the sizes need to be adjusted so that the struts fit just right. After everything is measured, the design is sent to a 3D printer. I use a Prusa printer. And depending on the size, the prints may take hours or more than a day to print. All of my shapes come in kit form. As a result, it becomes an educational experience to build. Because I print them at just the right size, the pieces go together without glue, and they can be deconstructed so that others can reassemble and learn about the shapes. Think of my kits as a specialized form of Lego that can build geometric shapes. Remember the early version of the interlocking tetrahedra that formed irregular pentagons? Well, I went back to the drawing board. I wanted to see how short I can make the lengths so that the tetrahedrons could interlock with as little wiggle room as possible. I came out with a length width ratio of 13 to 1 as opposed to Matt and Adam's 10 to 1. And I think this is because the sticks don't come in contact all the way to their endpoints, as Matt and Adam's model does, but rather my model are joined by the printed hubs. I am very pleased with the results because the vertices form regular pentagons. This model I do not sell as a kit because it is very difficult to put together. I want to save you the trouble. So I sell this model as already assembled. Thank you to Adam Savage and Matt Parker for making this video because it inspired me to create my own version of the intersecting tetrahedra. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this and visit my shop.